Hey, you've got highlights of the Franklin at Mount Juliet game that we were discussing earlier in the recap and review. Um, Mount Juliet gets out with a 42-35 overtime victory here as Franklin can't seem to get Mason Earls on the ground there. Franklin comes back and I'm not sure. Oh, oh. not sure which quarterback that was because they played two of them, but one of them just coughed it up there to end the overtime. That would have been Wes Patterson. Right, Wes Patterson coughed it up right there. Yeah. And that pretty well sealed the deal for the Golden Bears, 42-35 in overtime and the Region 36A championship for all intents and purposes. Both of them have games Friday night. Um, actually, Mount Juliet plays Thursday night against McGavick. So um, big Thursday night action over there. I think Mount Juliet plays three Thursday night games this season. So Trey Perry and the guys like that Thursday night stuff. I bet there's a bunch of schools that are jealous too. So the Golden Bears dressed all in black. That was that, that gunmetal gray, that, that graphite gray yeah. stuff. Yeah. Whatever it, happened to just home and away uniforms? Remember that? You had one helmet. You know, you wore it all year round. You oh, can thank Oregon for like, that. Yeah, no kidding. Well, it's part of the process nowadays, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah so you're, now, you, you're showing your age. So. <laughs> well, I think my beard does that, don't you think? Anyway, it's now time for our pull apart peak performers. <laughs> Obviously, breaking down some of the guys that are actually done a lot of stuff, things that we're talking about this year. And, you know, well, let's start out with Bryce Robinson. He's a sophomore quarterback. Tell us about the kid down there from Clarksville Academy. Sophomore quarterback from Clarksville Academy threw for 364 yards and seven, seven touchdowns. Had to ice down after the game the other night. Oh, I bet he um, did. Yeah. Um, Clarksville Academy with the uh, 70 to 54 win over Perry County there. Big win for them. How about Austin Amore, the junior QB from Grace, Grace Christian? We talked about him a couple of weeks ago. He, yeah. he accounted for nine touchdowns in a big 77-60 win over Mount Pleasant. Well, um, this week, only seven touchdowns in a 53-52 loss to Huntland, but threw for 286 yards and a pair of touchdowns, rushed for 253 yards and five touchdowns. So, um, tough Big effort in a tough loss for mm -hmm. the Lions there. But again, um, junior quarterback out there with Rusty Smith. You got a lot to look forward to next year. What a slacker. Seven touchdowns. Just seven touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. How about Dante Smith? Now, they've got a, a few cats down there in Spring Hill. You know, our buddy Tony Steele always makes sure that I see some of the huddle account from his boy Jamal. And I'll tell you what, Jamal actually is a playmaker. I saw him do some stuff, getting some picks on defense and, and trying to return the other direction. I think Jamal might be better on defense, actually. Okay. He will come up and hit you. I like like okay, him yeah, at cornerback. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, Dante, 27 carries, 252 yards, and three touchdowns. Um, one of five, broke away for 68, got to the left corner and went up the sideline, and one for 20. Also had a 79-yard kickoff return. So um, another big performance and another tough loss as Spring Hill went down 43-42 at Lipscomb Friday night. What about Sir William Phillips? It sounds like you should say it like that, right? You Sir should. William Phillips. That sounds good, especially with you and your British accent. Yeah, from Lipscomb, look at it, man. Yeah, well, that, that was part of the reason that Dante's was a losing effort right. because William Phillips comes up with four interceptions including one 34 yard pick six um, in that win also rushed for 111 yards and had four catches for 113 yards and a touchdown so um, big it was a shootout over there at Lipscomb, mm -hmm. and, and Phillips was right in the middle of it with those four picks. Antoine Branch, I remember talking about him at the beginning of the season. Kind of been quiet a little bit, but obviously he has a good game for you to be talking about him. Right? Uh, yeah, um, well, I figured you were keeping up with him, the Purdue commit. That's what I was talking about, but yeah. I hadn't heard much from him since. Well, but, uh, one thing you might want to know is he got an offer from Wisconsin over the weekend. Okay, so what's that, what's that mean with the, about the slice of bread? It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, man. Okay, whatever. Well, how about this? The fact that it's the two Big Ten schools. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's interesting to me how the Big Ten is continuing to come down this way. It's the recruit. Harbaugh effect, man. I'm telling you. Think about this. If Jim Harbaugh can knock Brian Kelly's guys, Brian Kelly's got a four or five star, and all of a sudden people want to go hang out with Jim Harbaugh, and they're saying that he's the coolest cat that they've ever met. I mean, maybe this worth, you know, like hanging out in trees and doing sleepovers and picking your nose on national television. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, it obviously works for the program, and they're undefeated right now. Anyway, Antoine Branch, 307 rushing yards and six touchdowns in the Knights, 49-27 win over Creekwood. Um, big back. I mean, six foot, 215, power guy. Yeah, the, the kind of guy that most defenders uh, avoid. Yeah. 
You refer to him as business decisions. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think Herm Edwards is the first guy that I heard <laughs> say that. But yeah, I mean, you got to decide. Do I really want to take yes. this on? It's kind of like that clip of um, Marshawn on 60 Minutes from over the summer. <laughs> you, oh yeah, the, the, the which beast mode? You yeah, know what I mean, it, where nobody really wants to get in front of that exactly. guy. Exactly. So yeah. I mean, I wonder if they, you know, I I, I will say the practice field, or uh, watching uh, the tape after a game has got to be pretty interesting when you're seeing guys shining shoes and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> Especially when you see, I mean, I understand it. You got a guy six foot two fifteen. He's probably running like a what, a four 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 five, and he's coming directly downhill at you. You know, would you say it's a business decision? And, and you're a high school kid. I mean, you're <laughs> you're you five, eight, five, after this, nine. Man. Yeah, a concussion is not going to help you. Do I really want to do this? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. So that's going to do it for our pull apart peak performers right there. We're going to take a look at the class rankings here in just a second. But I need to remind you, go to uh, xanderinsurance.com. That's xanderins.com to find out details about their cool scholarship giveaway. Now it is um, to participate in this you have to be recommended by either your principal or your head coach and you have to write an essay. It's a 500 word essay basically explaining what you're going to do with this opportunity uh, you know to kind of close the gap some. Now, a lot of kids out there can use that so go to www.xanderins.com that's www like you, it would start with anything else xanderins.com to find out more of the details. $20,000 scholarship. You know I'm not even cool. sure you have to type in the www You probably don't even more. tip Xander, in Xander Insurance. I'm sure it'll take you to their page and either way you can find out all the details on where you can maybe recommend somebody that's actually worthy of that. Now obviously there are a lot of D1 commits coming out of the Nashville area and we love that you know mm -hmm. but there are those kids that are just below that cusp that you know need an opportunity you know maybe at a, a division two school or something like that and they could use the the help you know to basically bridge the gap and get where they need to go. Anyway so let's start out with some of these schools that uh, oh my gosh so here we go it's class 6a rankings and guess who's at the top of that Jeez, louise it's marable followed by oakland second you know uh, where we where do we start let's we start someplace else like maybe with mountain juliet being at number five right now we could start got a there. pivotal game right there in the middle of that class right? yeah they, they jumped franklin with that win the other night franklin yeah. stays in there at number seven and then at the bottom you've got blackman and smyrna coming in at nine and ten smyrna with a tough loss last weekend against riverdale so um mid-state representing pretty well up there though one two three half of them from Middle Tennessee. You know what? I like that. How about this? Independence. Now, we've talked, obviously, with the coach of Independence. We've also just finished talking with Eddie Woods uh, there from Cane Ridge. They're one and two right now. Well, how about the Centennial Cougars sneaking in at number three? Uh, they're not sneaking at this point. They're eight and one. They're rolling. Did you just say that because your kids went to Centennial? You're mad because I said they snuck in? No, yes, I'm saying did. that yes, because they're playing some great ball and they're playing a lot better than <laughs> I had, that I had anticipated coming into the year. Oh, so you're admitting you thought that they would be worse. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, but if you stand by but, that. But I don't think their coach necessarily expected to be eight and one at this point either. Okay. Right. So there's that. Yeah. All right. How about Tony Bernetti's boys in third place behind our old friend Steve Matthews down there in Knoxville, Knoxville yeah. Catholic? We got to go down there and see him. That works. Yeah. We can do that. You paid the gas this time. Uh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so <laughs> what are we seeing here? What are you looking at in this class? I'm looking at, well, I'm looking at Pearl Cone because, again, we've talked a little bit about them. We had Coach Brunetti on a few weeks ago. Yes, I'm liking the sophomore quarterback, Xavier Shepard. He's just continuing to come on for them. Um, had a big-time performance for him in their 63-7 win against Tullahoma last weekend, and he's going to have to continue to perform for them as they get into the postseason mode. And also, you've got Marshall County there at number five. Um, slipped from four last week week and I'm not real sure why all they did was um beat Maplewood 39-16 I mean yeah I mean they beat a ranked team Maplewood was ranked last week right. but not this week but they fall a spot that's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, well, how come we don't mention many Memphis schools? I see Memphis East is down there in the, at the bottom in number 10. I'm sure they got some pretty good programs. I'm, I'm shocked that they're not representing more. Yeah. Not sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> you stumped me. I know. Obviously. How about Class 3A? Alcoa sits top Class 3A, of course. And we just finished talking earlier about number nine, Fairview. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got a pretty good game going up. They haven't lost a game, obviously, but they're going up against a team that's only lost one themselves, right? And and they just broke into the rankings this week. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. But but there's there's one of your Memphis teams. Raleigh Egypt comes in at seven. They're um, they're nine and zero. Oh, so um, there there's a Memphis team for you. I'm just curious. You know, yeah. another, another major city in the state of Tennessee. I figured there'd be some prospects coming out of there, especially with. Oh, a, yeah. Oh, there's players all over the place yeah, in Memphis. Yeah, an AAC, I mean, you know, contender like Memphis, you know, you figure that there's be and some. And they're talent not letting very there. many of them get out of there either. Mike Norville's doing a great job. How about the fact, the sidebar, real quick, you know, mm -hmm. the fact that the Big 12 didn't expand? You don't think that the AAC president's like. Whew, 
thank goodness. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't lose Houston, you know, whoever or else. Memphis, Memphis or, yeah, yeah, any of those other schools, exactly. All right, Class 2A, Adamsville is atop that uh, that class. But there's old Waverly hanging in at number seven and Watertown at number five. Who else and, you looking and, at? And Forrest tied for number two. They, um, they have been hanging at number three for the last few weeks. And... Just a little shift in the voting there, I guess. But the Rockets trying to finish out an undefeated season um, coming up this week. Keep an eye on Waverly. Mm -hmm. um, that's a team that lost in the first round of last year's playoffs, but got a lot of those guys coming back. And, and I think Matt McConnell runs a, an offense that they really enjoy. They throw it around a lot. He calls it... Um, Basketball on grass. Basketball on grass. Mm -hmm. so Some people had to play it like that. They didn't have the luxury of a court. You know? In fact, well, was you he making fun of poor kids or something? No. When oh. he first got there, that was how he appealed to some basketball oh, okay. guys to get them to come out, actually. I know, that's right. Threw it around a lot. Yeah, I bet they did. Hey, um, Nashville Christian School in Class 1A comes in at number 7. Now, we're going to talk to uh, Jeff Brothers next week. So, tell us a little bit about his program, where you see them sitting in the class. You know, um, their two losses were to JP2 and to White House Heritage in um, 3A. So they've tested themselves. They've won their games in their region. They're undefeated in region play and pretty much right where they want to be heading into the postseason. Yeah, how about finishing out the classes? Division two, double A. Brentwood actually is, or excuse me, Brentwood Academy is sitting mm -hmm. number three. NBA's number two. Ensworth moving up in the rankings. I remember they were kind of 10 there maybe two, a few weeks back, and now they moved up to number six. What kind of up big, so far? They had a big win this weekend. They um, defeated Father Ryan 23-7, got a, um, another solid performance out of their quarterback, Jalen King, and Tim Covington rushed for 131 yards. So they're, again, you know, Coach Bowers and, and that program is, is just one that you can't count out until they're done, I don't think. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for our rankings. And that was brought to you by Price Point Furniture. Where the price is the point. So I'd like to give a special thank you to all of our sponsors in that segment. Of course, Pull Apart uh, for our peak performers. And like we just mentioned, Price Point Furniture. Where the price is the point. Yes, for sponsoring our class, our class rankings. Hey, when we come back, so Edward George, former Tennessee Titan, <laughs> former Houston Oiler, former Fork Union. I don't even know what Fork Union is, but we're going to find out when we come back. So stick around for more of the Xander Insurance Countdown Friday. We'll be right back.